It's like almost there, almost. Okay, so let's revisit 3D from AI art. And so I like control that has gotten us a lot closer. Okay, so to start off with, there is three keys. So we have Nerf. So Nerf is basically a way of doing 3D reconstruction with 2D images. And the thing that's really nice about it is that you can give it trash images and like it'll give you something back. Like it, it, it might not be a good thing back, but it still does have some sort of reconstruction. Whereas like other methods might just fail. Nerfs always kind of have some type of output. Um, and that's really nice because you can kind of do some back and forth stuff and like so like you put trash in you get trash out and then you might fix that trash a little bit hopefully. okay so that's the nerfs uh secondly we have control net control net is a way of adding extra conditionals into stable diffusion and that's really important for our process it's like really important overall but for what we're doing we're doing like constrained optimization basically like we want the images to be optimized towards a particular 3d object and so it's really helpful for that um so we're mostly going to be using the pose aspect of control net control net can do a bunch of different things so it can use depth and it can use normal maps and uh, scribbles and any sort of thing to create a constraint and like hand poses and all these other things. So for us, we're just going to be using human poses. So um, that's going to really help with making sure that arms and stuff don't disappear and that like we have a consistent model throughout. Um, and yeah, it just like it works so much better than I was expecting. Uh, and then there's also textual embeddings and LORAs. And so that's to get consistent models. Textual embeddings and LORAs um, are both ways of constraining the actual visual information a lot. And so we just grabbed some from the internet and yeah, that off to the races. So one of the reasons why I wanted to revisit this 3D Nerf stuff uh, is because Google has recently put out this Dream Booth 3D paper. And so basically how it's set up is they have a three-step process. Uh, they start with something that is like Dream Booth, so it, which is very similar to Laurels or Textual Embedding. So it's a personalized AI. Um, and then they're combining that with a Nerf. But one of the things they found is that they were getting really overbaked uh, 3D object. So what I mean by overbaked in this sense is that it has the essence of the object, but it's kind of overdone. It's like you can tell it's an owl, but it's like it's an owl so they were trying to find out ways around that and they decided to so they settle on an image to image translation which is really similar to what i had been previously trying so previously i had used multi-view image to image translation to kind of improve the image and so that, that's kind of what i had been previously trying so i really wanted to revisit this project because it had like the second step was basically what i had already done their third step was just kind of uh returning all these things back to the uh 3d nerf stuff so that's kind of their pipeline their pipeline is uh partial dream booth 3d uh then an image to image translation and then revisiting the dream booth 3d like yeah so it's, it's a three-step process so um i kind of looked at this and i was like okay so the problem that i was facing the first time around is consistency all of my images were all over the place so i was like maybe uh the, the thing i need to fix is uh making it so that the images are a lot more <laughs> consistent and so textual embeddings and lores are the obvious way to do that but there's also control net and control net is a really powerful way of limiting the kind of different types of images that stable diffusion can create so by combining those two my step is basically text to image or image to image with control net to kind of limit it to what a 3d object is already these steps we can also repeat over and over again so um I, like and i was trying this out and sometimes it would converge and it would get better and then sometimes it would get worse so it's something that i still need to figure out like that part of it a little bit but like it sometimes does get better which is kind of interesting to think about if you wanted to actually recreate the paper more faithfully there is um an open source version of dream booth and there's an open source version of dream fusion and so you actually can recreate this all it's just it would actually take a fair amount of work and the open source version of dream fusion requires a larger gpu than i currently have so i also wanted to point out like the google one does have much better metrics if you look at their things like depth maps and stuff their depth maps just look a lot cleaner than mine mine are a little bit like there's some patches in them they're not like they're not analytically good i guess <laughs> okay so let's look a little bit at the results so um in particular when we look at the gui nerfs uh we see that the images are actually a little bit overfitted so uh if you're near one of the points that uh, one of the pictures or viewpoints uh, you'll have pretty good coloration but but as you move away from that it'll keep a lot of the structure but a lot of the actual coloration will um fall off and so that had a little bit to do with how i did the sampling i was a little bit lazy and i just did a like circular camera I, I should be doing some more random sampling and things like that so um that's something that uh was a little bit lazy on my behalf <laughs> um the other reason for doing that is i've noticed a lot of people using destuttering to actually uh clean up video so if you can destutter between the images maybe that would give a more consistent image so that was the other thing between making a circular video is like maybe in that case we can use destuttering to like further reduce the noise i never got around to that secondly we can look at the models that they output so um nerfs are a complete 3d object but oftentimes if you're using them in some sort of game you want a standard mesh you can use things like marching cube algorithms to get a mesh from the 3d these meshes are pretty patchy but like you can see her ponytail like it captured a ponytail um so like there's a lot of detail that they have as well and hopefully there's like some method of more encompass 
encompassing some of this. Like, um, I, I think it has a lot to do with thresholds on which part of the cloud density actually gets captured. So I think there are ways of kind of filling out some of these holes, although there's still a lot of work to be done there. So, um, but like a ponytail. <laughs> <laughs> One of the craziest sentences from the Dreambooth 3D paper is, A key insight at this stage is that Dreambooth can effectively generate unseen views of a subject given that the initial images are close enough to the unseen views. So just like, just take a moment, think about that. It, it sort of means that like some of these algorithms might have a version of 3D, like they might have th like a sense of 3D built into them. And that is so interesting. Like That's not something that they were like designed to have a 3D understanding of the world, but like it kind of brings up this topic that comes up sometimes in AI where, with uh, MISA optimizers. And that's basically this idea that there's these like an optimization algorithm might create these sub optimization algorithms to help them solve problems. Even though they weren't tasked with these sort of designations, uh, internally they might end up building out some of these systems. If you're trying to do this denoising of 2D images, you might actually need to have an understanding of the 3D world so that to help you out like with that denoising aspect. And this is like, this is subtle proof that that might be a thing. Like it's it's not, I, this is this is evidence that that might be the case. It's not, it's not a given fact like you would need to do a lot more statistics and stuff but it just kind of like to me it shows that there's like a lot more going on here than sometimes people assume like a lot of people have just been running away with this idea that like oh they're just like a collaging tool and it's just mixing images together and this is like this is giving it the idea that maybe it actually has a 3d understanding of the world that it's gained through trying to denoise and that's like that's really fascinating that kind of idea that there's like sub optimizations that happen within some of these algorithms to help them further understand so it's like it kind of is like another piece of evidence in that learning bucket where they are, they are not doing the kind of really simplistic thing that people seem to be stating that they're doing but they're doing something more interesting and to me that's just fascinating. I wanted to include a bunch of the tools that I was using so a lot of them are just scripts that I put into this box here. Um, it was a lot of scripting and that's yeah uh, yeah that's it. Have a great day and I like if you try anything out I really want to see